Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and welcome to this episode for Electromaker. In today's video, we're going to be learning how you can create your own makerspace for under £100. $130 if you're American and €100 Euros if you're European. So before we dive into the parts that I've selected and painstakingly gone through online to find the best things that you need to create your makerspace, let's talk a bit about the purpose of this video and why I've decided to do it. Now, when you look at other makers on YouTube or other social media platforms, you always see stuff like this. You have your power supplies, your different oscilloscopes, all kinds of crazy equipment and components just sort of dotted around and it looks great. But in reality, this is not going to be practical for most people who just want to get started in electronics. You don't need all these oscilloscopes. You don't need all the equipment you see behind me. This is stuff that I have garnered over years of experience. I found it in random places, bought it off eBay. Some places were giving it out for free. I got a bunch of components from a school that closed down. So it's not like that. I've, it's not like you need all of this stuff. You know, I've even got CNC 3D printers. Again, you don't need all of this stuff. If you really just want to get into maker stuff, then what you really need to do is try and spend as little as you can to do as many projects as you can to get yourself interested. So what I've done for this video is I have basically looked at everything you're going to need in terms of modules, sensors, bits and bobs and tools, and I've tried to keep it all under £100. I think it's about £101. It's give or take a few, it doesn't really matter because the point is I've managed to get it down to a price that's affordable for most. So to help us with this list, I've got myself the trusty iPad because I am absolutely useless at remembering things and there's a lot of stuff. So I have to use this uh, while we're doing this video so I can go through everything that I've picked in this list and describe what's going on. So the first thing that we've got on our list is a pair of needle nose pliers that you can get for $3.19 from the Electromaker store. Now, the reason why I chose these is that, well, needle nose pliers are fantastic and you're going to need them a lot, especially if you're doing electronics. The thing about needle nose pliers that make them different to typical pliers is that needle nose have a very, very sort of fine end on them. So they're good at you know picking small things, bending small wires, getting around corners, whereas a big pair of chunky pliers is not really gonna help. Now, the next tool that I think is absolutely invaluable is wire strippers. Now, the ones that I have selected from the Electromaker store are manual ones. So they're $4.90 and they have a pair of handles. You put the wire in, you pull the wire through and it strips it. Now, if you want to spend a little more money, you could get yourself an automatic wire stripper, which I always do because they are brilliant, but they're a little bit more pricey. So to keep things cheap, I've decided to go for these wire strippers. So in terms of the soldering iron kit, I've decided to source this from Amazon and that's because you get a really good deal in terms of getting a soldering iron, some solder wire, you get a little bag of tools and that's where the, the important part is. You get a lot of tools in these. You get like uh, get um, needles, you get uh, screwdrivers, you get various different soldering iron tips, a uh, stand and you know just everything you really need to get into soldering and that actually allows you to desolder components as we discussed earlier so you can go ahead and get some old electronics and scrap what you need chuck away the rest and that's a good way to build up some extra bits and bobs if you need them for a future project so now the next thing you're going to need are some testing tools and this is where i got a little bit cheeky so you could buy yourself a multimeter because you know multimeters are an essential component when dealing with electronics and you're also going to need sometimes some different bits of test equipment maybe something like an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer but it turns out the raspberry pi pico is not only around five dollars each you can program it to be or to do those things and that means that you can completely eliminate the need for some testing tools especially for the first sort of projects that you build you're not going to be doing anything advanced you know you're not going to be doing high speed spi you're not going to need to do something like oh i don't know microvolt measuring so as a result of that you can basically get away with just using a pico as your multimeter including voltmeter ammeter probably even resistance measurement you could definitely do uh you could, you could code it to measure capacitor values and inductor values and there are tons of online resources that um, you can download for free and put onto the Pico. So for example, I think recently someone did a Raspberry Pi Pico oscilloscope which you can connect to the computer and actually see traces. Um, I actually did a project for Electromaker a few weeks back and that was a Raspberry Pi Pico W Electromaker W multimeter. Basically the idea was that you can turn the Raspberry Pi Pico W into a uh, wireless mul uh, multimeter so you can measure voltages and currents remotely and access it over the internet via a browser. 
So with that in mind, I've decided to get two Picos because one's going to be used as a piece of functional equipment and the other one can be used to program uh, for different projects. Maybe, maybe you're making a robot or basically it's just the main microcontroller. So buying two makes a lot of sense. Now, if you want to add another $5 onto that, you can actually get a pack of three for about $16 or so on the Electromaker store and that gives you some good savings or you can just get the one and you can get the starter kit, which I think is about $6 and that gives you the cable and a few other little accessories. So now we're gonna move on to the circuit basics. And basically these are the things you need to start creating individual circuits. Now, these do tend to work with discrete components, but as I said before, you can get those separately if you want, you can get them from salvaged equipment. Um, but I still think it's worth just having because you might find that when you do start to do discrete uh, circuits, these are the tools you're going to need. So one of the first ones we've got is a breadboard and these sell for around $5. Again, you can get that on Electromaker. And we also have a pack of wires and uh, these wires actually are pre-cut, have the little, um, what do you call it, the little pin headers on the, on the end so you can uh, connect them straight into the breadboard as well as your other microcontroller projects. And they go for about $4.95 and you get a whole bunch of wires, which is great. So you can basically make lots of different circuits. Um, you're also going to need power. So I've decided to go for two different options. We've got a, well, technically three, but two in terms of battery. So anyway, the first option is a PP3 connector and they sell for about £1.50 and these are great for connecting to nine volt batteries. Now I love nine volt batteries and the reason why I love them so much is that the voltage is very high um, and that allows me, well, it gives you a lot of freedom to do things like regulation with a 7805. So you've got a lot of headway above the five volts. It also gives you the opportunity to split that supply down. Um, so for example, if you've got a nine volt uh, battery, you can use a 555 negative voltage generator and you can basically, what you basically do is you, you oscillate the, uh, the 555 output connected to a push pull and then have a special diode and capacitor arrangement. But basically what you get from that is a negative voltage from a single power supply. So you can easily get plus nine and minus nine volts. Now, the other thing you're going to need is an AA battery holder, which you can get for about $1.32 from the Electromaker store. And these are great for low power projects with low voltages. So two AA batteries put together makes about three volts. And that's perfect for powering the Pico as well as many other microcontroller projects. And last but not least, we've also got a $5 breadboard PSU. These things are great because they stick to the end of your PSU. You can connect them up to different power sources, usually something like a USB uh, connector or a mains adapter, you know, like a uh, 12 volt adapter. And then you can get different voltages out of them, usually 3.3 and 5 volts. And all of these are great with microcontroller projects. So now we get into the interesting stuff. I have decided to separate these next few chapters into inputs. Uh, and output. So basically your circuit's going to do something from the outside world by taking in some kind of stimuli, and then it's gonna do something which you do with a microcontroller, and then you do something to the world which is through an output. So the first thing we're going to look at is a groove button module. And what's great about this is it has mounting holes so you can mount your button anywhere. It has a, a little connector so you can basically use the wire connectors from the previous uh, mention to this module to your microcontroller so you can get a push button um, for any project you need. And these go for about $2.10 and this allows you to just have a button capability. Now, the next thing you're going to need to get is a panel mount potentiometer. Now, the one you can see here is a 1K ohm potentiometer. And the reason why I absolutely suggest you get one of these is because it allows you to have a turning dial that can be used in so many different ways. For example, you can connect the output of the potentiometer um, to an ADC of a microcontroller so you can read the position of the potentiometer. You can also use it to adjust the resistance in a circuit. So let's say you built a 555A stable, you can use the potentiometer to adjust the frequency. And this basically allows you to build any project that needs a turning dial, such as a thermostat or maybe something like a volume control. So I highly recommend you get at least one of these. Now, when it comes to sensors, I absolutely suggest you get as many as you can because the more sensors you have, the more stuff you can react to in your environment. So the first one that I've decided to list is a light sensor, is a groove light sensor. So again, it has that same type of groove connector, but you can use your own wires with it. Now for $2.13, you can use this module to detect light, which can be used in so many different applications. Now, the next item on our list is a groove touch sensor, which goes for $2.75. And again, these are great for detecting touch, which is another way to interact with your environment. A sound sensor going for $3.50 is another good thing to have. So you can 
basically listen to the environment that your uh, project's in. You can react to loud sounds. You could even possibly react to uh, voice commands if you know how to uh, take the raw uh, audio information from the microphone and read it in real time to process it in a signal processor. A water sensor is very useful if you want to do things like automated growing, um, but it could also be used for detecting leaks. So you might want to make an IoT leak detector that you could put under the sink or something like in the bathroom. So let's say the plumbing goes wrong, you'll know before it causes damage. Now the Groove temperature sensor which sells for $2.13 is another excellent sensor to have in your project because sensing the temperature around you can be so important for so many different applications. Maybe again it's automated growing so you want to find out what the environmental conditions are like. It could be a thermostat so you want to see how warm the room is. It could be fridge controls or AC controls to make sure that it doesn't get too hot. And you could even use it to monitor the temperature of say something like a Raspberry Pi and use it for active cooling. Now, another great sensor to have to go along with the temperature sensor is a humidity sensor. Now, these go for about $4.13. Again, these are Groove uh, humidity sensors that also include a temperature capability, but we're just going to focus on the humidity here. Now, the final sensor we're going to look at is the PIR sensor. Again, another Groove sensor, and it goes for $2.88. And these are great for security applications because they detect a change in IR signal. And the way they're built is usually in a dome with weird little triangle patterns. Basically, they can observe the change in IR signal over a very wide area. So if somebody moves across in a room, it picks it up and that makes for a great security device. So now that we've looked at the circuit basics, breadboards and wires and tools, we've looked at the inputs that allow your uh, device to recognize the world around it. Now let's see how your device can interact with the environment. This is where we're going to look at outputs. So the first output module on my list is a speaker that sells for around $5.63 on the Electromaker store. These things are great because it allows your circuit to basically produce sound that anyone can hear around, around the device. So for example, you could create an intercom with a microphone and a speaker separated by some distance. You could have it play random music and tones, and you can even have it play warning sounds. Let's say you built that security system, you could have it in the corner and it says something like, you've been, I don't know, you've been spotted, get out of my house. So the next output device I've decided to list are two servos that sell for $7 combined. Now the reason why I think servos are an excellent addition to our workshop is for two reasons. The first one is that they convert electrical energy into mechanical energy, which means that we can basically make electricity move stuff. But more importantly on the second point, servos are position control and they have negative feedback. I think it's called negative feedback. Anyway, the point is, you send a command to a servo to set the actuator to some position and then it will move it to that position and it reads back that position to, to make sure that it is in that position. This means that creating advanced things like robotic arms is a lot easier to, to do with a servo than something like a stepper motor. So if you've got two of them, you can already have one arm there and another arm there. So you can make it do things like this. If you added a stepper motor to the bottom, you could then rotate it and that would be a three degrees of freedom robotic arm. Now the next output device that I've decided to list is a H-Bridge which sells for $3.73 on the Electromaker store. Now the reason why I've chosen this product is because a H-Bridge can be used to control a DC motor and give it directional control, you know, backwards and forwards. Um, so H-Bridges are very commonly found in robots and this is going to relate to what we're about to suggest in just two parts time. Now the next thing on our list is two relays that sell for $2.25 and the reason why is that relays allow a small signal to control a very big signal. It also means that we can use our microcontroller to control things like mains devices. So we could actually make things like wall sockets, lamps, lights, uh, computers, just about anything. We can make them IoT controlled on the power side. So you could have a Raspberry Pi Pico W uh, communicate to uh, or connect to a relay and then communicate to a server remotely. We can then control the state of the relay via the server by clicking a button on a HTML page. And then we can control the state of the power being delivered to a mains device such as a lamp. So we could go on, off, on, off, and the lamp would turn on and off respectively. Now the next item on our list is two DC motors. And the reason why I've picked two is because it allows us to create robotic projects with two independent wheels that can be driven. And then you can drive them separately to either move the robot forward, backwards, turn left or turn right. Now, the reason why we need those H-bridges is to control these motors via the microcontroller. And it also allows the DC motors to be put into forward and reverse modes. So H-bridges and DC motors go very well together. On the second to last item of our list is an OLED module, which goes for around $4.75. And pretty much the reason why we added this is it gives our microcontrollers a display that we can read information off. You could use this to, to print 
debugging information. You could use it to show options on a drinks machine, or you could use it as a little IoT watch. The point is OLED displays are absolutely fantastic and getting a small one for your projects is a great way to get into them. And finally, for $4.88 is a 16x2 LCD, and I kind of added this for the fact that I just really like them. They are quite antiquated now. I mean, they're not really the display that you'd, you'd commonly go for in a small project, but there's something nice about these 16x2 displays that I personally use a lot in my projects. They're big, they're easy to read, they're very commonly seen on vending machines, um, they're very easy to program. They do require a few number of pins, but again, you can get I2C versions, so they only need four pins, power, ground, and data and clock. And I, I think they add, uh, personally, I, they sort of add a bit of a retro feel, a bit of an, an older touch. And personally, I just love those displays. So I've added this to the list because they're only $4.88. They're a big display, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with them. Finally, I'm on a fixed budget, so I don't actually get any money from whatever you buy out there. So if you buy all the stuff from Electromega, I'm not gonna see a penny of it. But still, it does keep me employed, so please do consider it. So now we come to the most important part of the video, project ideas for the stuff that I've suggested. Now, luckily for you, I have gone out of my way to try and pick the most diverse range of sensors, uh, outputs, inputs, bits and bobs, so you can make as many things as I can think of, or at least some of the most important maker projects. Now, the first one that comes to mind is an automated greenhouse. Basically, you can use the Raspberry Pi Pico W's wireless capabilities to allow control remotely, so you can monitor the status of your uh, greenhouse, while the temperature and humidity sensors allow you to, uh, to, to monitor the environment, the water sensor allows you to monitor the state of the soil inside the uh, greenhouse and then you can use all the other little bits and bobs like the display and the potentiometer to create an internal dial that's inside the greenhouse itself so you can manually override settings. Now the next project idea I've got is a Wi-Fi enabled RC car. Basically we have the two DC motors that provide power to the wheels but the H-bridge allows them to be controlled in different directions and then all of this is controlled by the Raspberry Pi Pico W. The Wi-Fi capabilities of the Raspberry Pi Pico W allow you to control the car remotely over a browser, and then you could even incorporate sensors to turn it into something a bit more like a rover that you might see on Mars, so you can go around and monitor the environment that you're in. And finally, one of the most rewarding things you can build out of the stuff that I've suggested in this video is smart home devices. You could create your own smart home infrastructure. The combination of a Raspberry Pi Pico W and a relay allows you to control just about any device in your home, whether it's a light, a lamp, a computer, a coffee machine, or even a kettle. Now, I hope that everything that I've covered in this video will be enough to start you on your new projects, or even if you want to go ahead and create a new maker space. So good luck out there. If you do buy this stuff, get it from Electromaker because it supports me and supports us guys. Again, thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.